Hey, everybody, and welcome back to the Garage Gym Experiment Podcast. My name is Adam. That's Jake, and we're back again for another great episode. Uh, we have some new products tonight coming to you from Bells of Steel and Bridge Built, so we'll go through those. Survey results, which we're going to breeze through pretty quickly, and then we're going to get on to if you could have only one cardio machine for your home gym, which one machine are you going to pick? We put that into a discussion, and we're going to share your ideas as well as our own. And then we have some holiday gift ideas with some budget requirements or restrictions in there. So Jake will share some, I'll share some, and lead to a cool conversation. So hope you enjoy. Thank you, Adam. And first first up is new products. So um, yesterday, I think Bells of Steel released a couple of new leg machines, um, specifically leg press machines. So the first is a two-in-one ISO leg press and hack squat machine. Machine. Um, so this, what's unique about this one is it, you have the ability to use a single leg at a time. And I don't think there's anything else quite like that out there from any company in the history of leg press. Um, so that's a pretty cool innovation from Bells of Steel. Um, it's it's a pretty large option, um, pretty beefy. It includes a 1,500 pound weight capacity. The overall footprint is 45 and a half times 108 inches. And then you can also load your, um, load it up with storage, it ha load it up with plates that has storage included. Um, and then there's all, they also released a more like budget. Oh, and I should say that one um, starts at $29.99. Um, they also released a more budget friendly, um, something similar to the Titan or the Force USA option, leg press slash hack squat two in one machine. So this one's a little bit more um, realistic for most home gym owners um, with a thousand pound weight capacity and 87 and a half times 37 and a half inch footprint. Um, again, pretty similar to uh, the Titan one. And again, same price as the Titan one as well when it's not on sale. Uh, so both, both of these currently include a um, um, discount, um, which um, we uh, will uh, link the product in the uh, description. We'll also have a link in um, to subscribe to Neural News, which also has all of this information um, delivered to your email. Find it in your inbox. Next up, we have some new products from Bridgebuilt. I'm gonna go through four of them. I'm gonna go through four of them pretty quickly. Um, the Phoenix rack is that unfoldable rack. Um, used to only come in five eighths inch hardware. Now three released fourths. in a, a three, what is it? Three fourths. Oh, three, inch. three quarters inch hardware. Now the updated version comes in one inch hardware, which I'm sure people will be um, appreciative of. Uh, we have the bulletproof plates up next. Those are five layers of precision laser cut steel, two layers of polycarbonate plastic, and they are customizable. They came out at Home Gym Con. To see them in person is quite a sight. They are pretty. Um, I think Patrick talked about using these for university options who switch out their plates, different designs, stuff like that. This could be something they go with. So um, we have a plate storage uh, station, super beefy. Um, like extremely overbuilt in a good way. It's got an angular design. Um, you have the addition of uh, wheels and barbell storage that you can add to it as well. Super cool option. I'm sure it's a little pricey, but I mean, if you want something that's very well done, Bridge Belt has these options for you. Uh, and then last but not least, the Clydesdale change plate set. These are steel plates. Um, got a really cool design, customizable, right, Jake? I think eventually. Eventually, cool. Um, and yeah, they come within a 1% uh, weight tolerance. Yeah, I think Patrick did mention something about making some unique home gym con ones. Um, so I imagine that he'll be able to, they'll be able to like make them for, for anybody eventually. Um, and then I will, I will just say um, the Phoenix rack, the one inch holes is just like a limited time edition 
I have no idea. I, I think the, they're selling through them pretty quick. Um, and I have no idea if they're actually going to come back. So hmm. just also keep that in mind. Um, all right, let's, let's fly through some survey results. So, um, we asked people to rate the black Friday deals, either great, good, average, or bad. And the majority thinks that they were just average. So 51 said average, 24% said good, 22% said bad, and only 3% said great. Tony the Tiger. <laughs> All right. Uh, we also asked, when do you typically work out? We're talking time of day. So pretty spread out throughout the day. The least popular time was 8 a.m. to noon. The most popular time was after 5 p.m. And that puts uh, before 8 a.m., that's 29% of people working out. Noon to 5, 22%. Yeah, more spread out than I would, thought, would have thought. All right, next up, what percent of your home gym was bought, used, um, so the most popular answer here was between one and 33%. So about 48%. So almost half have just like a, a, a bit of equipment bought used. 30% was the second most popular answer with 0%. So they haven't bought anything from the used marketplace. 30%. Um, between one third and two thirds is 13%. And then more than two thirds is only nine. Okay. We asked, um, how many people have purchased a gym equipment from a retail store? Pretty split. No, 55% we'll call it. Yes. Um, 45%. Um, just to let you know that the, uh, Yes, the 45% is down 14% from 2021 when we last ran this survey. And so more people are not buying from the retail stores where the trend is heading. All right, and this is a repeat question that we've asked over the years. Um, so what are the what are the top reasons that you train? Um, so it, we asked between four different reasons. So number one, physical health. Number two, mental health look good or four competitions. The easy number one reason was, as you probably guessed it, physical health. Uh, so 52% said that was the number one reason. 25% um, said mental health look good was in third with 14 and then four competitions, 9%. And then we also just followed this, that first question up with, and then what's your number two reason? And then um, the number one reason here was mental health with 38% of the vote. So um, really number one, re you, you know, you, you kind of think about a, lo a lot of like people kind of think like, when they think about the fitness interest industry, they think about people just wanting to look good or for competitions, but in reality, it really is for physical and mental health. Okay, this is gonna take us into our conversation. Next, how many pieces of cardio equipment do you have? Um, this one is also pretty spread out. Um, the least or the uh, smallest answer here is zero pieces of cardio equipment at about 15%. The most is 36% have one piece of cardio uh, equipment, 29% have two, and then about 21% have three or more pieces of cardio equipment. Gotcha. How many do you have? Um, one. One. Just one? You're down to just one. Just one. Yeah. And How I many do you have? Three. <laughs> are, these, are these all yours? No, these are not. Mine is, all mine is that one. Um. But yeah, I do have more than three. But we did ask the community, and Adam and I are both going to answer as well. If you could only have one piece of cardio machine for your home gym, what are you getting? So if somebody asks, what's the first piece of cardio machine? Um, this is likely their answer. Um, and so, we, like I said, we asked the community. We On an Instagram post, we had over a few hundred comments I did manually count those out and put them into groups. Uh, that was fun. Um, <laughs> not complaining. Um, and the results were actually pretty awesome. I thought, um, because like one thing with the Instagram, one thing with the Instagram, um, stories is you only have, you only have the ability to ask about four things. So this is really the only way to do it. If you want to do it on Instagram. Um, so, 
what was what were the answers? Like I said, pretty spread out. The number one um, response, and I don't think this will surprise anybody, but it was the rower with 22% of the votes. In second place, just behind the rower, was the stair climber with 21% of the votes. The air bike in third with 19. Treadmill, 13%. Upright bike slash bike erg was at 12%, 7% for the ski erg, and then about 6% for the sled. Um, so uh, a few things to just keep in mind, like the rower at 22% isn't like, still makes up a pretty small proportion and the overall responses were pretty spread out. Um, number two, I think I was I was pretty surprised at like the stair climber. Um, there was a ton of people who mentioned that they really want the stepper in the comments. Um, air bike was a good mix between echo bike and assault bikes. Yeah, so um, pretty cool responses. And I think this just kind of shows you that everyone has their has their own opinions, and you really it, it really just depends on how you work out uh, for for which one you're going to choose. Um, but Adam, before we get into ours, did anything here surprise you? Uh, I wouldn't say surprise me, but I would say that like, I found it interesting how the stair climber was at 21% and that does kind of coincide with the stepper, like kind of making its way into social media and on people's feeds. So yeah. I think that really did have something to do with their choice and, and maybe they weren't thinking stepper, maybe they're thinking stair climber, but it did happen to coincide with, you know, that kind of coming out. Right. <clears throat> All right. Adam, what are you going with? My choice may be a boring one, but it's going to be a motorized treadmill. I have some quick reasons. Um, one is you can jump on it and you know do a quick, fast run, maybe some sprint intervals, something like that. But uh, the big reason for me is you can do long, slow runs. The way I like to train, I like to do um, endurance events, so long distances. And so long, slow runs are going to be really important for me. Um, why not run outside? That's what a lot of people say. You don't need a treadmill. I agree. Um, but with my current situation, uh, my wife works nights and I have young kids. And so you can't just leave the house consistently with the kids in bed. I might get cops called on me or CPS or something. So, um, and so it's been really beneficial for me to, um, to train how I like to, and, uh, at like the convenience of the home gym. So yeah, treadmill. makes sense. And then I, and this is a response that like honestly hasn't changed for me over the last like five, seven years. Um, I would go with an air bike, uh, more specifically the Rogue Echo bike. So um, I love having the ability, like the, I don't think there's anything that you can quite like just get after it and wear yourself out as quickly as an Echo bike. So um, just the fact that you can kill yourself in 10 minutes whether that is all at the end of a workout or if um, you have 10 minutes to go, uh, 10 minutes before your kids get home and you uh, just need, need to get it out of your system or something like that. Or if you had a long, if you had a, a long day um, before dinner to not knock something like that out. Um, that, so I, I have found that the Echo Bike is the best way to do that. Um, I like the ability to just easily move it around the gym or you can take it outside, um, do a workout outside. Um, another thing that I don't think many people have ever really mentioned is you can wear any shoes um, and combine them with lifting weights. So if you're, um, whereas like if you wanted to do a squat workout and run, um, with running shoes, it may not be quite as comfortable as doing it with the, the echo bike or like even deadlift, like you don't really want to deadlift with your running shoes either. Um, so the ability to do that with an echo bike, um, and not have to like change your shoes has been something that I, uh, don't take for granted. Uh, it's also much cheaper than most treadmills or stair climbers, um, less than a thousand dollars. Uh, so like, I think the overall value and then the fact that it will the overall value or the price combined with the fact that it will last forever means that the overall value is really high. Um, and then one more thing that I've, I've thought about is 
there, there have been times where um, if I'm working out in the early morning, it's really tough to get going. Um, but if you just go and hop on that bike for like five minutes, you're loose and you're, and you're going. So um, I think those are the reason I actually, those are the reasons I would choose the Echo bike if I could only have one. Um, but I like having multiple. Oh, for sure. For sure. But this would be the first one I would buy. I like it. Yeah. All right. Holiday. Tis the season, right? Holiday gift guide. I <laughs> Holiday gift ideas from Jake and Adam. All right. So uh, we've broken these out into four different sections. I have a list. Adam has some. Um, under 300, under 200, under 100, I think, and then under yep. 50. All yep. right, so under 300. Oh, um, and can we put a caveat in here? So Jake and I uh, mentioned multiple on a lot of our lists. And then can I ask you, okay, you could only mention one and then pick your top for that category. Okay. Yeah, cool. Sure. All right. All right. So under $300, um, mine's a good mix of like for people who want something very practical as they're building out their home gym, like next up on their to get list. And then also sometimes it's nice to get a gift that <laughs> is like something you wouldn't really want to buy, you know, it's just like, I, and then I'm like, I'm looking at the, like the, um, Clydesdale change plates for example. So um, the new uh, change plates from Bridgeville might be tough to actually purchase because there's a lot of cheaper options, but if it was a gift, that would be awesome. So that that's one. Um, the Crandall Fitness Heavy Duty Bench 2.0 is probably like the best value bench under $300. Um, so I think that would be a good one for anybody who needs an adjustable bench. The multi-grip Swiss barbell from French, just under $300. It is a Kabuki clone, um, but probably one of the better value, um, actually probably one of the best like value multi-grip bar out there. Um, so you can grab that for under three, 300. Uh, a clear coat FB 5000 bench, that's just an awesome bench. Um, for under 300 is, 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 would be a nice addition if you wanted a flat bench in addition to your adjustable bench. And then uh, the Northland Open Trap Bar, um, very, most high value um, open trap bar that you can get today. And you were going to ask me if I could only have one. Yep, if you could only recommend one, say someone is in the market for all of these, under $300 is their price range. What's your top pick if you could only mention one in your holiday gift ideas here? I'd probably go with the open trap bar. Yeah, I like that choice. Yeah. So it was in my head too. Yeah. You can, nice, versatile, like. You uh, can use an open trap bar. That's it. Yeah. yeah. All right, next up, under $200. Um, so for anybody who has a power rack, I highly recommend getting the barbell anchor from Darko Lifting and it, it makes um, lifting within the power rack and storing your barbells quite a bit easier. And I think it makes it look better as well. So I've, I've really enjoyed using my um, um, anchor and really appreciate it every day. Um, you know, somebody who needs change plates, you can grab a 37 or 35 pound um, set of change plates from Rogue. Um, the new Arch Type 2.0 from Tolos, the barefoot shoes. I really like the 1.0. Um, anybody who is kind of thinking about making the barefoot shoes jump, I think this would be an awesome uh, addition or a, a first one that you could wear. Uh, they, they, I think they look quite a bit better than some of the others so that you can wear them in public. Um, and then, um, Founder's a really good guy, so um, check that out. And then uh, the this was kind of a, a harder um, price range, but I'd go with the Rogue Stainless Steel Lap Bar. And then if I could only choose one, 
If you had a power rack, I'd go with the the barbell anchor. Or on your or list, you I would have picked the barbell anchor too. I was would picturing you? opening up all of these, and it'd be a cool to open up something like that. Right. I think that'd be a that'd great, be, that'd be, great, especially idea. if it was like a, a stainless steel one, like right. a, just yeah. the the right color pick. Um, and if you yep. don't have a power rack, but if you have like a a half rack or something <laughs> like that, he he also has the dock, which can also work as like in like the, a different area of the rack. So. Um, yeah, that would be a cool gift. Um, under $100. So this might be the sweet spot for a lot of people. Uh, I don't know. Uh, $300 is quite a bit for a Christmas present. All right. <laughs> um, all right. So here are a few magnetic clamp collars from Bells of Steel. I, I mean, once you start using magnetic stuff, you really don't want to go back to non-magnetic stuff. Um, these are a pretty cheap option from Bells. The uh, speaking of magnetic XL speed fence from Surplus Strength, the uh, Genesis Jack 2.0 from Clevabil. If it's on sale, it's ninety nine dollars. Uh, rep Ooh, accessory yeah. strap from uh, all from from Rep, but also but created by Beltfed, and then mag pegs from Fringe. So a lot of magnetic stuff on this one. And then if I had to choose one, this is really hard. I feel like the Jack is the most practical for, for a lot of people. Everyone deadlifts. You may not. Yeah, I think I think that's the safest bet here. Like if you if like find it. someone who doesn't really know, I think the Jack's Jack's a good one. What would you, which one would, would you go with? If I were opening the one I'd be like, would be a cool opening gift. I'd probably say the, um, uh, the belt fed strength and, and rep accessory strap. I think that'd be a cool one. Yeah. Like, like, um, attachments are always cool. I think I know I, the only reason I didn't say that was because I was thinking not everybody has a pulley system. <laughs> well, and then, step it up, I guess under, under $50, just an ab mat, uh, barbell bomb from ab mat rep ab roller. That's like 15 bucks. And Got then your old bottle opener from Rogue. Oh, that's fun. Um, and then like I'll I'll just throw in like a like a any sort of like apparel brands that would be good for yeah. fifty. Yeah. Um, but if I had to choose one here, what would I be most excited if I opened it up Christmas morning? I wouldn't be as excited as any of the other sections, but I would be excited about. I'd go with barbell bomb. Okay. Yeah. I would go with Admat, I think. Like your Admat. traditional Admat. Yeah. Yeah. Throw that into play like day one. All right. Yeah. Right. Cool. But the barbell right. bomb just because it's it's um you can move it around. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Oops. Oops. All right, oh, Adam's no. turn. Yep, Jake went down the ladder, so I'm going to climb up. So I'm starting at 50, and I'll go up from here. Uh, I did gym apparel as the $50 one. It's always fun to open up um, gym apparel. I think it's the only clothes I really like to get. Um, so I said goat shorts from Not Dead Yet. Those are awesome. Um, anything from Massonomics, I, I like their stuff. Uh, and then like rogue T-shirts or hoodies are always fun to get. Um, my other two options is Drink Spotter from Massonomics. I love mine. Totally unnecessary, but cool um the magnetic one i think is like 35 bucks or something like that uh and then rack magnets um i i need to just buy rack magnets um but yeah if i had to pick one of these um probably go i, I think a drink spotter would be a, a cool gift to open up yeah i'd go with drink spotter cool cool my $100 options, I have some weight pins. So um, I have one from Gym Pin and then Bear Steel also makes them. Uh, two cool companies making weight pins that you could add to Selectorize stacks. So it'd be um, something that someone would have to really need there. Uh, I also went with the mag pins from Fringe Sport with the, um, the hitch pin in there. What are they called? Ma mag, ma what are they? Mag pegs. Mag pegs. Yes, that's what I went with as well. Um, another option could be mag grips. I know um, the knockoffs, Walmart knockoffs are popular. I prefer the name brand ones just from like the angles that the uh, grips on the hands give you. Those are all around 60 to 
Um, and then the slant board, uh, my, one of my favorites there. So that's my easy pick slant board. If you don't have a slant board, uh, you need to get one. So what would you want to open? You want me? What would I go with? Yeah. Mad grips. Mm -hmm. Mad grips. Nice. You? Oh, slant board. Slant board. Slant board. Yeah. That new one. It's 99 bucks. Uh, under $200, I have two options. I have both these things. I love both these things. One of them was a recent gift. It's the Cleva Adroit 2.0, um, the landmine with the, uh, the magnetic holder there. Uh, and the other one is uh, the Rogue Tib Bar. It's, um, I'm not going to say overpriced because it's very well built, but you can find cheaper ones is how I want to say that. But if someone's gifting it to you, the Rogue one's awesome. Uh, I love it. So... Uh, those two, if I were opening one, definitely the Adroit on this. Definitely, definitely the Adroit. Right. Is, is the yeah. is the Rogue Tick Bar really like over a hundred dollars? Oh yeah, oh yeah. yeah it's a hundred and sixty, hundred and seventy, something like that. What? Yep. Is yeah, she's pretty? Are, you can get cheaper ones for like what thirty, forty bucks. She's pretty. Okay. Oh, that is bulky. It's nice, yeah. Use that like acetyl plastic for like the. Uh... Anyway, yeah, it's nice. All right, let's go with under three hundred. One option. I only one option, uh, and uh, it's the Texas Power Bore, uh, the twenty nine millimeter version. Currently three fifteen. So I kind of <laughs> broke the rules here. Probably have to pay for some shipping and handling too. But they just like just stopped their Black Friday sale because it went a couple extra days where you could have saved forty dollars on this bar. So I was within the uh, the range there. But you know yeah, the, I'm gonna break the rules and say this: the Bells of Steel bare bare naked power bar could have been a good one here as well. That's yeah, and that's uh, that's like two hundred like ex or what is it? I think they raised it. it a was one ninety nine? I thought two nineteen now. Oh okay, but but yeah. Which one did you pick here, Jake? The Texas Power Bar. Oh, nice. Nice. Good choice. Cool. I really want this bar. I'm going to do yeah. it. You've said you, right. you've been talking about this one for a while, too. Yeah. Wow. You know, when I do that driving job over the summer, I stopped at a random gym. I deadlifted with a, like your traditional Texas Power Bar. Loved that bar. Um, and then when they came out with the 29 millimeter, I do like a little bit thicker bar. So. Kind Man, of. I wish and I, it has like this online presence where everyone's like, oh, it's a great bar. And that's know, all you have I to wish. do is like build it up online. And all of a sudden I'm like, oh, yeah, it's the best. So I really wish I could in and fall in love with it. Yeah, wish, that'd be a good oh, yeah. one. I don't I still don't think they know what it is. <laughs> no. Give them a couple <laughs> they, years. They get, I think they live get in a whole there. new different world. Anyways, there it is. There it is. That's going to do it. A little uh, side note. This is Jake and I's a third time trying to record this po po bleh, podcast. So a couple nights ago, we had some technical difficulties, but we got First, it done, Jake. And you know what? It was, it was right after, didn't, didn't I mention on a podcast recently, like, oh, these have been so easy to edit. We've been just well, knocking these out. Yeah, yeah. I was like, we've just, we haven't had any issues in forever. Yeah. Well, you mentioned it on our second attempt at this one because, like, the first attempt was smooth, but then we had internet problems, and then the second attempt we were just like fumbling our words the entire time. Um, so this that, one felt that, smooth. I've smooth I've for had, us. I've had issues at the beginning of podcasts before, and then you have to like restart, and it's never as smooth as. Like, Hannah, no. Felt like this one is not as good as that first one, but it's, it's good. You guys heard a pretty good one. Well, that's going to do it for us. If you like tonight's episode, be sure to keep your eye out for new episode releases wherever you listen to podcasts. Stay involved on our social media sites by following Garage Gym Experiment and taking part in our Sunday surveys on Instagram so that you can be a part of these conversations. Like, follow, subscribe to the channel on YouTube and get involved on our website for all your home gym content needs. Be sure to follow Home Gym Con on social media and check out the new website, Jake. Is it up and running? Not yet. Pretty soon there's going to be a new website and it's awesome and beautiful. So 
Not yet, but soon. But soon. Check that out. Uh, we want to see you in April at Home Gym Con. The list is amazing. Sornex, Rep, Rogue, Titan, Bells. They're all going to be out there and about 50, 60 others. So some of the best home gym content or uh, companies there are will be out there with us. All right, Jake, that's it. Uh, anything else left for the listeners? Nope. All right, guys, we'll catch you next time. Thanks for listening. Bye. Bye.